Hi, welcome to another new video from our channel. And around this series is actually under protein separation series technique. And this video is concerned about centrifugation technique. So, why this is important for protein separations? You know, protein separations actually happens. So, protein resides in the cell inside the cell. So, you have to extract the protein from the cell. Okay. So, the first technique you have to understand, you have to understand very basics that these are centrifugations because this is the second important step in sequence. First, what the people do, first they take the cell and to separate the protein from other organelle, what they do, first lysis the cell, that means they break the cell membrane and then what when you have all the cellular organelle suspension in a suspension after the breaking after the lysis of the cell you have all the cellular organelle in a suspension then what happens to separate the different organelles uh, they use they will use the centrifugation technique and you know the centrifugation technique is very uh, normally people you know, mundanely used lab technique in a bio lab and this is very important to understand the basics of the centrifugations what the different centrifugations people use in the bio uh, engineering labs and you know the centrifugations not only important for the cell differentiations means cellular organelle differentiations this is also important in various fields let's say material chemistry i'm just giving an example which is very interesting let's say you have a nanoparticles nanoparticles means sub nanometer 1 to 10 let's say 10 nanometer range a gold nanoparticles yeah then you you have activated you have activated the surface of the gold nanoparticles let's say by a long polymer chain so when you have a gold nanoparticles, it has the less density, less size as compared to the other one, as compared to the activated gold nanoparticles. When you have surface passivations, so what happens in surface passivation, you have a gold nanoparticle in center and you have a whole large polymer at the periphery. So that will normally increase the size as well as density of the particles. So in that case, centrifugation technique will be the most important to separate the non-reacted gold nanoparticle from the activated conjugated gold nanoparticle. Okay, so this is very important technique. So just uh, let's chart. As you know, centrifugation technique actually can be classified in two different centrifugations. One is the differential centrifugations which is based upon the difference in size as well as uh, the density okay and but this is not actually that much uh, precise that much uh, precisely can be done that's why people sometimes use other different other centrifugation that is actually the density gradient where you can understand there will be dense there will be a dense density gradient we will see in the later uh, slides there will be a density gradient let's say in any solution sugar solution density gradient or cesium chloride solution density gradient then upon which your suspension will be uh, run through okay and your suspension will be accumulated in different density according to the density so that density gradient centrifugation can be classified into two different centrifugations that is red zonal centrifugation and isopicnic centrifugation each has, has its own advantage as well as disadvantage that we will discuss so first let's start with uh, differential centrifugations okay okay so differential centrifugations as you can understand is actually according to the size of the nanoparticles sorry or size of the particles in the suspensions so gradually what happens your centrifugation speed increase and then your different particles with different sedimentation speed normally precipitates out or goes into the pellet so upon centrifugation what people do you give a centrifugal force your solutions will going to be rotated and there will be pellet and there will be a, a supernatant so in supernatant less specific supernatant less soluble part will going to be pelleted out and in supernatant the soluble part will be there so the higher density particle will be going to be pelleted out and the lower density particle will going to be in the supernatant that's the main technique so rate of the sediment actually can be increased for this differential centrifugation by increasing the speed of the centrifugations okay and larger particles are actually going to be sedimented first uh, followed by a uh, 
smaller particles a smaller a small dense particles and followed by the very lightly dense particles okay so first in differential centrifugation first you will get largely dense particles and then a very a less dense particle and then a very lightly dense particle and this normally people use which is very useful for harvesting the cells are producing the crude substrate from tissue homogenate we will see in the examples of uh, different examples okay so this is about differential centrifugations we will see next slide wha what is the use what is the applications okay yeah so in differential centrifugations we discuss that uh, what happens the gradually increasing centrifugation speed uh, uh, to separate the particles of different sedimentation different sedimentation coefficient okay so particles in the differential centrifugation is actually going to be separated uh, with as, as as according to their sedimentation coefficient and the sedimentation coefficient actually depends upon the size and density of the particles okay so in differential centrifugation you will first accumulate the most dense particles and followed by less dense and followed by very lightly dense like if you think about cell then what will happen cell a cellular membrane is very very light in density so that will be separated very after time and very t equal to 0 if if you follow t equal to 0 and t equal to t so let's say t equal to 10 minute after 10 minute or or for something greater than that cell membrane will be separated we will see in the next slide so let's first see the experimental technique of the differential centrifugation. That is very useful. Okay. So you first have a sample which is a mixture of a large particles as well as the smaller particles. Okay. Now you want to separate sedimentations of the particles according to the mass. Mass means molecular weight, which also includes the density as well as the size size of the particles so larger size particles will be a larger sedimentation coefficient and smaller size particles smaller coefficient uh, sedimentation coefficient and then you are giving a centrifugal force so when you are giving a centrifugal force the larger particles are going to be accumulated in bottom and uh, smaller particles are in the suspensions okay so now if you separate now if you separate the pellet as well as supernatant let's say after a centrifuge after giving a centrifugal force in the bottom of the centrifuge tube you have the larger dense particle now you take a pipette you take a micro pipette and take it out all the supernatant put it another centrifuge tube now you have one centrifuge tube with pellet and another centrifuge tube with supernatant and then you, thus you separate now if you do this for many times you can separate all the uh, particles according to their density as well as size that you will see in the next slide that for cell we will see the examples of different centrifugations for the separation as we have said now differential centrifugations is very important to separations of the cell extract in the second stage of the protein separation first step we have seen the filter first step is actually the lysis of the cell you have broken out all the uh, cellular membrane so now you can have you may have uh, the unbroken cell unbroken cell unbroken clump to separate that from the broken homogeneous or not homogeneous broken suspensions you have to filter out that is the first step here they are filtering out to separate the unbroken cell to separate the unbroken cells and next you have a filtered homogeneous now if you give a 16 g 6600 g for 10 minute the most dense as i have said the most dense part of the cell is what dense chromosome it has a dense chromosome you can understand the dna is how much long so how much molecular weight it has how much density it has so that will be first uh, separated that was the first plated out you just can separate out take the supernatant in another centrifuge tube and do the same things but in different centrifugation speed let's say 15000 g and five minute what is g what is that all the things we will discuss in some another video that's also very important parameter for the centrifugations and next the what will separate mitochondria chloroplast and lysosome okay and you can understand this is the cytosolic part this is from the cytosolic part and this is from the nuclear part the first one nuclear part is very condensed very dense and after that you have the light very lightly dense organelle of a cell that is a plasma membrane 
and you have I, I think you have probably heard about that whenever you can uh, you take some cells and homogenize let's say frog egg and take a homogenized mixture then you will end up after some time if you keep for some time you will end up the cellular membrane at the upper surface and that is very light that proves that is very light in the middle that is yellow cytoplasm and uh, the lower part is the nucleus okay so the cellular membrane is the very lightest part that will go after that will after come after a very large time that is after 60 minute and 100,000 100,000 G rotations and now after 30,000 300,000G it will contain a very light ribosomal subunit and all the things Okay. So that is all about differential centrifugations uh, for the separations of cell extract. So now one drawback is there for the differential centrifugations. You can understand this system is not that much precise that it will differentiate the nuclei and the mitochondria density separations, density different. You can, it can differentiate the density difference between the mitochondria and the nuclei okay these are very similar in density that's why there will be a cross contamination that is the problem of this dense differential centrifugation there is a cross contaminations of the separations of the organelles there is a cross contamination that will be disadvantage of uh, uh, the differential centrifugations technique to avoid that red journal centrifugations had came so red journal centrifugations we will discuss in the next slide which has appeared to overcome this drug.